Hey everyone, it's Jeannie here, and today I am so glad to be joined by award-winning Christian singer Ellie Holcomb. Her new album, Canyon, is upon us, and it's been so good. I've had the sneak preview of it and just really loving the heart behind it. Ellie, thank you so much for taking time to chat with me today. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, the album is amazing. Um, it's just Thank so you. deep. It's not It's not on the surface, regular Christian music. Unfortunately, I hate to say that, but sometimes <laughs> we do get that. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so let's talk about the inspiration behind the album title, which, you know, initially when I heard it, I said, Canyon, oh, that's interesting. And then hearing you explain it in your, your Instagram videos and stuff, I was just like, man, that's deep. So share with us <laughs> the revelation that you received behind that title and the track. Yeah, so I um, I am so, thank you for having me. Thank you for all of those kind words, Tini. I'm like, you're the sweetest <laughs> and you're so beautiful. Um, but I, I went through a, a, a season uh, of really a counseling journey of visiting some of the deepest wounds in my own story. Um, that's not my personality. I'm a seven on the Enneagram. Are you a Enneagram person? Uh, I think I was, uh, I think I'm an eight. I can't remember. Eight. Okay. I'm married to an eight. Y'all are awesome. But I, sevens, uh, the main motivation is avoiding pain at all costs. And so um, I just, I was, I was so grateful uh, to basically learn how to grieve and lament. I had acknowledged a lot of things in counseling before I'm a big advocate of counseling, but I, I learned to actually go to the places, to the wounds in my story, the places that I thought would kill me to visit and, and just learn to grieve and to breathe there. And, um, in those places I encountered the tenderness and the empathy of God. And I don't think I'll ever be able to shake that. But so I had written a whole record about that process and was in pre-production, which is when you're deciding songs and everything. Well, then March 3rd of 2020 hit EF4 tornado tears through our neighborhood right behind the house. Scariest wow. night of my life. Woke up to the house shaking. Um, and then a week after that COVID-19 and we all know, I mean, I, I just almost like hate to talk about it because I'm like, we all know what happened. It was so hard, but political division, I mean, racial tension and division, so much loss, loss upon loss, sorrow upon sorrow, trauma upon trauma, really. And, um, and a sense of feeling like maybe we felt as a nation more divided than ever. Um, and even within the church sometimes, like divided. And so I, in the midst of all of this, when the numbers were low, I got to go to the Grand Canyon for the first time in my life. Have you ever been, Jeannie? No, I've just, we've driven past it, never was able to stop. Oh, I've, yeah, man. It's, it's on the bucket list. It's on, well, it's been on mine. I just went for the first time. And as it turned out, it kind of changed my life. So I, we, we camped, so I highly recommend it. We camped on the Northern Rim, and then we went down into the canyon and rafted on the river, camped on the riverbanks, and then rafted out. And I will never forget our guide. Um, and I don't think he was necessarily a person of faith, but I'm like, you are preaching the gospel because he was talking about how the and and really it's just that that creation declares the glory of God, and so that's that's just what it is. But he was explaining that the canyon walls, the walls of the canyon tell a story. And it's really a story of disaster upon disaster, landslide, mudslide, earthquake, volcano. And, and then in the midst of this, there's this huge divide. Um, and I just thought, man, what a picture of where our hearts are right now in this season. Mm -hmm. So loss upon loss. Um, and then a sense of feeling divided and isolated and I was just like, this is, this feels like crazy timing to be here because it just feels like what our, we all know that to be human is to be broken. And we all know what it's like to have our hearts kind of split and break wide open like a canyon. But there in the very deepest pit of the canyon, there's a river running through. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, man, that is, we just had all these floods in Nashville. And as it turns out, water always moves to the lowest place. If you've ever, I mean, I don't know if you've ever had flooding in Orlando, but it is, it will go to the lowest place in your house. And, and as it turns out, there is a current of living water. There is a current of God's love that runs 
deeper than our deepest ache or sorrow and that will carry us when it feels like we can't carry on any longer and it will carry us back to a place where we know and can remember that even when we're broken we're beloved and we have a place where we belong and it'll carry us to a place where we know that we belong to each other and so i literally came out of the grand canyon i shoved a pile of 35 songs off of my desk and i was like start over like i i cannot i couldn't shake it i couldn't shake it and uh i think i had known god's tenderness in my own story and it felt like i understood the gospel to be like this beautiful necessary raindrop and when I went to the Green King and it went, I was, it was like God was saying, no, it's not just a range up. It's the whole ocean. It's all the water. I'm all the water. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is really good news. <laughs> so yes. I um, wrote the record from that place. And uh, I think there were maybe two songs that I kept. Um, one of them I'd already released called Constellations. And then uh, the rest of them, I don't even know. I'm like, maybe I just wrote those to work through my own grief. I don't know if I'll ever release them, no. but I love, uh, I love the way this sounds, this record sounds. It feels like maybe it's, I guess since I let myself finally grieve, I think it is probably the the record that sounds, uh, I, I don't know. I feel like I've experienced healing on a deeper level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like ever freedom, known. that freedom, freedom that wasn't able to come from before because of the trauma. And, you know, yeah. you're preaching to the time, seriously. I really do hope that you come up with some kind of curriculum around <laughs> everything that you just said, because that is so good. That is such an incredible revelation from God. And um, I'm, a, I'm a pastor's wife oh, and um, constantly, you know, mentoring my girls. And, you know, what I notice is people run from pain you know? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. and, and like part of my person, I'm the opposite. Like I'm confrontational. So I'm you like, are, you are an A. This is my husband. I'm like, no, 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 no. He's like, yes, this is intimacy. <laughs> right. Let's it. And I'm like, <laughs> my, that's so funny. My, I've, I've said those same words to my husband. Hilarious. <laughs> that's awesome. But so, you know, I, and, and because of that though, I have discovered the beauty of healing, you know, of confronting yeah. the really painful things. So, but what I want to say is being a pastor's wife and having so many people come to me for counsel and guidance, mm. that yeah. is not the normal. Most people run from pain. That's right. That's right. Um, I did it. I know I'm one of them. <laughs> I did it for so long. So can you kind of talk to that? You know, there are going to be people you know, and it, it's not, it's non-discriminatory. Like I've seen all races, all ages of people. Yes. Just, I can't go there. It'll break me. It'll destroy me. The pain is too much. Why would I put myself through that? Kind yeah. of speak a little bit more to that. I don't think there's enough Christian voices yeah. um, speaking to that. Yes, we do hear a lot of counselors and, and people, you know, therapists speak to that, but I'm not sure how many Christians are actually speaking to that. So I'd love to yeah. hear you speak to that. Oh, I love that Jeannie so much. Um, okay. So there is this woman, are you familiar with Brene Brown? She's a, she's a, uh, she calls herself a, well, she's a doctor. She does research basically on shame. And so she calls herself a researcher storyteller and she's really wonderful. She's a Ted talk on shame. That's kind of a game changer. Um, but uh, she talks about how we, it is so hard to own and to stand up in the brokenness in our own stories. It feels like it's gonna kill us, it really does. Yeah. But she says it is actually a great deal harder to spend our lives running from it. Mm. Because it doesn't change, it's still there. The wound is still there, that trauma is still there. And, mm. um, and I think for me, um, I, I was the same thing. I literally went to counseling for the first time. Um, and I was like, so I have this friend, uh, <laughs> and they're going through a really hard time. So I need to know. And I really did. I had a friend who, who, I, who was having a really hard time. And I was like, I'm just here. I'm just here to know how to help them. I'm fine. I'm fine. And at the end of it, Jeannie, I kid you not. She said, okay. Um, I kind of talked and kind of shared my piece and she said, okay, so actually you are in need of intensive counseling. And I was like, 
me. Um, yeah. And she said, I want you to, I want you to think about salsa. And I was like, okay, I love salsa. You're my girl. And she was like mild, medium, hot. She was like, you need intensive counseling. She was like, you can choose mild, medium or hot. Mild will be you coming in here. Um, maybe, maybe once a year to check in about your friend or whatever else is going on. Medium would be um, more of a need to know basis. Like you're in a conflict, you want help working out that conflict or you're having a moment of shame or whatever and we can come in and we'll, we can talk through those things. She was like, hot will look like laying your personality out across the gospel and actually exposing some pretty serious lies that you've been believing and some pretty serious like uh, broken patterns that you're in that you have no idea that you're doing and it will be really hard. You won't want to come back most of the times. And she was like, so you can choose mild or medium, but in about 10 to 12 years, your whole life is going to fall apart. Uh, or you can choose hot. And I was like, hot. (laughs) So I, but she just is repeating the invitation that Jesus gives to all of us that where there is truth, there is freedom. And I think, especially in light of the gospel, especially in the light of the fact that there is, that God entered into this mess of a world because he knew that we would all make a mess of it and that Jesus was broken for us and then walked, went to the gates of hell. I mean, he has been through anything that we are ever gonna walk through. He's been there and then he's walked right. through it. And, and he says that he'll be with us in this mysterious way via the spirit. And so there is this sense that um, I think for me, uh, to use the Canyon metaphor again, uh, there's a song called Paradox on the record that I wrote about this because I really did think that visiting, and this is the deal, I did counseling and visited this. I'm like, I dealt with this, I talked about it, but I still wouldn't let myself grieve because I'm like, if I grieve, if I let myself be sad and feel the weight of the trauma of the wounds, I might what if I don't come back from that, you know? And I, and I think that's a legit question. It's scary. It's scary to traverse down into the canyon, into the crevices of our hearts where our deepest wounds are. Um, but I think as I let myself just breathe in those places um, and grieve in those places, um, I realized that it's this kind of backwards and upside down nature of the kingdom of heaven. Like right. to die is to live. Um, it, the first shall be last. I mean, he's saying that all the time. The kingdom of heaven is like this, a tiny little mustard seed. And so you think you need to go out and do big things for God. And he's like, actually, if you'll just grieve and be broken and come to me, I'm going to bring a healing that's so deep and so real. Um, and I'm going to bring freedom and, and life to the places that feel like death. And so as it turns out, a canyon like if you look, I'm putting my, I don't know if you're putting video on this or not, but yeah. you know, a canyon's mm-hmm. like in the shape of this V and it's really, I read this article in National Geographic, again, not a faith-based article, but I am like, oh my gosh, a canyon is an upside down mountain. And so for me and my story, wow. it's actually been, it's the places of deepest pain uh, that I look back, I can see I've encountered God in those places. Yeah. And the way I know I've encountered him is because I've had peace and comfort that make right. no sense to have. Right. Right. Like I didn't muster that up. I didn't like self-help myself, you know, through that. Um, I did allow myself to breathe and to weep. And that was really important. Um, mm-hmm. And it makes me think about the scene from Exodus when Moses is talking to the burning bush and the bush is on fire, but it's not consumed. And and there is, uh, the mm. God says, you know, Moses says, so who am I supposed to tell Pharaoh? Like, by what name should I call you? Like, I, who am I supposed to tell him is tell him to let these people free. And God says, Yahweh, which in Hebrew, when you say that, I just learned from this Jason Gray article that I read, it sounds like a breath in Hebrew when you say Yahweh in Hebrew. And yeah. so there is this sense that the God who made us and put breath into our lungs, we're saying his name every time we take a deep breath. (laughs) And that's a language that whether people know it or not, that they're speaking his name just as they're breathing and being alive, both in the joyful moments and in the sorrowful moments. And so I think it's, I know that God is real, not in spite of the pain and the suffering in my life, but almost because of and in the midst of of. And I'm just, I think I learned 
that it was okay to grieve and be sorrowful and come as I was into the presence of God. And because of that, um, I sang songs of sorrow, but also I learned to rejoice in the valley because I'm like, oh my goodness, you're here. You're here too. You always, God is always moving to the lowest place. And you look at it, Jesus over and over again, stoops down to, uh, to scoop mud up to put in the blind man's eyes. Stoops down when the woman's caught in adultery. He, it literally says Jesus stooped down gets on her level, starts drawing in the sand to draw the attention away from her. The very fact that the God who made the whole earth becomes, stoops down and gets put in flesh, held in the arms of a teen mom. You're like, this is backwards <laughs> and upside down. He goes low. And, and I guess I would just say, if you're scared to go low, I know I've been there. And, and I can just say that, uh, that, God is also in, he's, he's been to whatever scary, lonely, low place that you've been in before beautiful. he's there too. Yeah. Yeah. That's so beautiful and so important. Um, you know, I can attest to that. I have had lost three children, um, in Ooh. miscarriage and it's the craziest thing, but the level of intimacy and closeness that I have with God now is because of each loss and like i can't blame anyone else <laughs> for the right. losses this is a me and god thing you know right right um, but god met me there in the most painful despair ever that i've ever experienced um and just you know it really strengthened our relationship so i 100 percent can attest to that um, oh girl <laughs> that is and it is, it does feel backwards, right? Like, absolutely. It I, makes no I, sense when I tell people I'm grateful for what I've been through. Right. Because and I, of what it did with my relationship with God. It's that's crazy. right. And I, and I think what's cool is I, we're allowed, I guess I'm like, I still have so many unanswered questions. Like, mm -hmm. I still am like, why did you write it that way? Like, I, like, I don't have answers for everything like <laughs> for every prayer that didn't get answered in the way that i wanted it to right? right but i have this person who has met me and who has carried mm. me through and i think i was um just this idea of the water when we went to the grand king and i don't recommend going in august just fyi like <laughs> psa um yeah. it is like 117 degrees it is even the guides were like why do we do this this is terrible you know <laughs> Why did y'all come on this trip? We're like, well, well we, it's pretty cool still. But the water in that river is 50 degrees. It's freezing cold. Wow. And I just think sometimes we're like hanging on to the canyon wall. It's like, I can't, I can't let go. I can't go down there. And the very thing that mm. is there to refresh us and to carry us is it, it, it requires us to let go of the control and to breathe and to be carried. I think of my kids in swim lessons. It's like airplane arms, chest up to the sky, head tilted back, look at the sun and, and breathe. And I'm like, that is such good life advice. <laughs> I'm like, it is. oh my gosh. Okay. Let go. Open your heart up, lift your eyes to the hills and breathe. Like you're going to be okay. And I'm definitely breathing has become, I realize it's a superpower and I'm like, Oh, it's so cool that when we're breathing, that calms us down scientifically takes the, yeah. we our, our blood rushes when our heart's racing, our blood rushes away from rational thought up here in the frontal cortex of our brain to the enigula fight or flight. Like breathing literally helps us mm. think and rational thoughts, you know, um, but it is also, as it turns out, maybe saying the name of God. And so it just is, I don't know. That's amazing. Kind of and you know, the truth is this generation is so fast paced. Like we don't do that. We don't breathe. We don't, we're not introspective sometimes. We're not stopping. Um, we, we feel like we have to hustle. I'm from New York originally. Oh, so yeah. like, that's all I did, you know, that hustle, hustle, hustle. Go, go, and then go. Jesus taught me, you know, to stop and rest and the importance of that. And just, mm. you know, reflecting and, and going through the pain and not just feeling the pain, yeah. all of that. So this is so good. Um, the album is so good. It's, it's really, um, it's just, it's a beautiful work of art. I love that you also included um, a song about racial reconciliation, which um, <clears throat> I think is obviously extremely important. 
Um, and just talk a little bit about that, about wanting, you know, to write a song about the bridge, you know, yeah. um, about God's heart for ra racial reconciliation, even though I got to be honest, there's some people in our circles that yeah. don't even believe uh, that there's a need for that. Yeah, I yeah. And man, that it breaks my heart. And honestly, I think I think I probably I mean, last year did so was so much it was so much. Um, but in the wake of George Floyd, um, I just and I think and honestly, Jeannie, uh, the combination of Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, and a forced stop on the busyness and the hustle. I just I there something was shook in me. I just I was like, oh my gosh, my experience is so different than that. And so I started intentionally um, reaching out to my black and brown brothers and sisters and really just intentionally listening. Um, and as I just intentionally listen. I'm like, if people don't believe that this is real, I would really encourage you to just sit across the table from someone who looks different than you and um, humbly ask them to share what their experience has been like, because um, I was undone. I really was undone. And I ended up um, with one of my friends, um, Zandy, who is in uh, an amazing band called The New Respects here in Nashville, asked if she would be willing to start a small group of diverse women, um, a bridge builder group. And we read this book um, by Latasha Morrison called Be the Bridge. Mm -hmm. and she walks us through the importance, like the heart of God for unity and racial reconciliation is all throughout scripture it's very near and dear um it's just pretty central actually and so i think this is something that i have missed um i just i think i just didn't know because it at, zandy always says you don't know what you don't know if it's not your experience unless you're really intentionally listening how would you know that that's some other people's reality and so it has been such a beautiful process to acknowledge the truth to listen to the truth and, and to other people's stories um, to lament. So I think I learned how to lament personally. And then this past year, I was wow. lamenting on really a global scale right. uh, to repent and then to begin this work of rebuilding. And it's so crazy, Jeannie, because, um, you know, these conversations uh, were small. And in light of so many of the like micro and macro aggressions, like lives that are being lost. Um, uh, black lives that are being lost in the wake of systemic racism in the wake of the, I, and I know I'm, I'm thankful for our police too. I'm not saying that I'm not yeah. grateful, but there are, the, the, we've got to have some reform. There's some, there's a lot of room for growth. And, um, yeah. and so I just think, man, um, it felt, it's felt sometimes our conversations have felt like throwing flower seeds at monsters, you know? Um, but all I can say is that just from these conversations, it reminds me of the kingdom of heaven because my heart, the way that I see the world, the way that I listen to other people, um, it had, it is seismic change. It's like, like huge shifts, tectonic shifts happening in my heart. And I am like, this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. He loves us enough not to leave us as we are. And so the gospel has become wider and higher and deeper and more colorful and more wonderful than I ever imagined before. And so I think Bridge, I wrote with Zandy, my co-leader in that group, and Carly, another member of our group, we wrote that together um, with another guy, Jordan Reynolds, really um, as an invitation to just say, we'll go first. Like, we don't know what we have gotten this wrong in the past. And but but God is the ultimate bridge builder and we are invited like he says in Isaiah 61 to be oaks of righteousness, a display for the display, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor, who will rebuild ancient ruins. And so we get invited into this story to be a part of rebuilding, to join up as molecules of water in that in that river, in that current of living water that runs to the lowest places and brings refreshment like rivers in the wasteland. And um, what an honor to be a part of that. I just, I, I think it's actually been our loss for not leaning in for me. It's been my loss for not leaning into this sooner because I'm like, God is in the midst of this. This is so 
close to his heart. And so it has been so beautiful. Um, I just so look forward. I know it's, I don't think we arrive on this. It's just a journey. And yeah. I love what Zandy says. It's like when you get it wrong, I think some of us are scared to lean into the racial reconciliation stuff. Cancel culture is real. It's like you yeah. say the wrong thing and or post the wrong thing and it's like, you're attacked. Um, but really there's this beautiful thing that God gives us in repentance and to be like, man, I'm so sorry. I got that wrong. Let me try again. Like I'm here not to be right, but to get it right <laughs> and to learn and to listen. And so, um, it has just been a beautiful, I'm excited to invite other people, um, into that beautiful work that God himself, he leads the way as our, yeah. as our ultimate bridge builder. I love it. All right, last question, because I know you have to go. Um, I love the song Color. And oh. I was wondering, is there a specific song on the album that really resonates with you right now? I know it's so hard. It's like, which one of your kids do you love the most? But <laughs> right now, in this moment today, as we speak, <laughs> yeah. is there a song that is just resonating with you? Or are you really like, this is what I want. I want people to listen to this song for sure. <laughs> on this yeah, page. yeah, I know. Well, I'll say one that's not been released because they all I, I, I love all of them so much. <laughs> um, but one that I think captures the heart of what I've I, the heart of the record. Um, and the heart of what God has been teaching me is a song called paradox. Um, and it is this whole concept of um, I'll just say it like this. When we went to sleep that night on the riverbanks of the Colorado River down in the canyon, our guide said, make sure you wake up in the middle of the night because there's something called the rim effect. And uh, when the sun sets behind the, when the sun sets, when the moon sets behind the canyon walls, um, he said, you're actually going to be further away from the stars than you'll ever be in your whole life because you're over a mile into the surface of the earth. Mm -hmm. And it will actually be darker. You'll be in the darkest place you've ever been because there's no ambient light. But because it is so dark, the stars will shine brighter and they will appear to be closer than they ever have before. And I... I woke up in the middle of the night and it that is exactly what happened. It was like, Gff. and so um, I think paradox tells that story well, that I think God meets us in the midst of, of our lowest places, the darkest nights of our soul. And uh, I think the darker the night, the brighter the stars shine and he's the light of the world. And so um, that song is pretty, that song feels, it hits. I'm like, oh yeah, this is different than what I thought. Like following you is different than what I thought. It's like, oh, you have to die. Take up your cross and follow me. You're like, that is hard. It is yeah. hard to, to go to the deepest places, but he resides even there. And, yes. um, so that's a, that, that song right now, uh, it's a good reminder for me. Sometimes I write the things that I know I might forget later into songs to help remind my forgetful heart um, of what's true. The next time I'm in a really deep valley, I think I'll probably play Paradox. 